John Gartner here. In this video, I want to share with everyone an exercise for improving your sake tasting abilities. I can tell you from a lot of experience that this is a great, great exercise. And it's simple. It's just a regimented and controlled blind matching of five or so sake. And it works. But also, it isn't magic. If you do this, if you practice almost every day or so, you will get better at tasting, expressing, and assessing sake. I'm very sure it'll work. But you have to take the time to do it almost every day. Before we get into the actual exercise, the objective here is reproducibility and consistency in your tasting. Uh, what you need to develop is your memory and your ability to express what it is you taste and smell. But again, the goal is reproducibility and consistency. If you say melon when you taste a sake and the next person and everyone else says strawberry, that's basically fine. As long as the next time you come to that same sake and taste it blindly, you say melon and not something completely different like peanut butter or caramel or something like that. Certainly, there are aromas and flavors that everyone should agree upon in sake. Banana, apple, grapefruit or nail polish remover, uh, anise or licorice, melon, rice-like facets as well. But again, even if that does not come across to you in that particular way, you can always adjust what you express if you know you're in the minority on that. So we're all different and that's certainly possible that you might smell or taste something different from everybody else, but you need to be consistent and you need to have reproducibility in your tasting. And to have that, you need to be able to remember flavors and aromas and express them in words that are consistent. So that's important. And that's what this exercise is designed to do. Here's what you need to pull off this exercise. You need five glasses. Uh, they need to be identical more than anything else. You could use something like this, which is a uh, tasting glass, a seishu grasu, that they use in Japan. You could also use a official tasting glass, a kikijoko, which is also commonly used in Japan. A white wine glass is a great choice for a tasting exercise like this. I highly recommend them if you've got them. Uh, champagne glasses or even sherry glasses will do as well. Uh, if I were to recommend only one, I would recommend the Seishu glasses. They hold about 90 milliliters. Uh, you can get them in the United States if you poke around, but they're just about the perfect size for an exercise like this. The next thing you'll need are coasters. Any coaster will do as long as they are identical. Um, this is a round coaster, of course, that we just bought somewhere, an inexpensive one. It doesn't matter as long as they are identical. You will want to write a number on the bottom from one to five. You'll write the number on one side and you'll place that face down when we actually get into the exercise. The other thing that you'll need is a spittoon. I highly recommend spitting between every one of these tasting rounds. Um, lastly, you'll need a timer, although that's optional. Uh, I think if you have a timer set, that sense of urgency helps you to focus a bit more. And that's all you need to do this exercise. Oh, one more important thing. You'll need five different types of sake. Uh, in terms of what sake I recommend for the exercise, we'll come back to that in a little while. Uh, but with all of the tools on top of that, you'll need five different sake. Okay, let's get into the actual exercise. To begin with, take the five glasses and fill them with sake, again, about two-thirds of the way up. That'll be about two and a half to three ounces, or about 70 to 80 milliliters uh, in each one. Set out the coasters, number side down, from one to five, going from left to right. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's just an easy way to remember it. Uh, and then you will put one glass on top of each one of the coasters. Uh, you may want to write down in advance which sake is on which coaster just for your own reference. But basically you'll have the sake lined up from left to right on coasters marked one to five with the coasters being face down. Next, set the timer for a certain number of minutes. There's no need to rush, uh, but this helps you focus. I suggest seven minutes for five sake. That's the way we do it when we do this exercise in my sake professional course level two, by the way. Next, taste each one of the sake and take notes for each one on your perceptions of aromas, flavors, secondary aromas, finish, texture, weight, acidity, sweetness or dryness, and anything else that stands out. Taste each one of the sake and then when you've done that, mix the sake up. If someone can do that for you, even better. But if not, just do it enough so that you are sure you do not know which sake is which. For the next round, set the timer for seven minutes again and retaste each one of the sake. And your goal now, what you're trying to do, is try to identify in which position each one was in in the previous round. For example, the one that's now in position one was in position three last time. The sake now in position two was in position four last time, and so on. When you finish this, check your results. When you check your results, you may find out that you matched absolutely none of them. You may find that you got uh, one of them correct or two of them correct. 
Uh, and as you do this exercise more and more, certainly you'll get better. But just check your results and see how you did. I do have a couple of tips and suggestions on doing the exercise. Uh, first of all, at the end of round one, before mixing the sake up, make sure that the level of each sake is just about the same. Uh, if not, your logical mind will look at a particular glass of sake and remember which position it was in last time. For example, if the sake in position number five was very aromatic and you only needed one or two sips to ascertain that, after you mix the sake up, you will look at just the level on the, in the glass and you'll say, ah, that was in position five last time. And you don't want to do that. You want to rely on your palate and your nose as much as possible. You want to eliminate anything else that your logical mind can grab onto to help you. And believe me, it will try to do that. So make sure the level in each of the glasses is the same when you're going into the second round. Furthermore, make sure that there's no marks on the glass or the coaster. Uh, as an example, this Kiki Joko here has a chip in the rim. And if you use a glass like this that's different from the others in any discernible way, when you come to that in the second round, you'll say, ah, this is the chip glass. I remember that was in position two last time. And you're not using your palate or your nose to identify the sake. So make sure the glasses don't have any chips or marks or stains on them. The same goes with the coasters. If they're tattered or stained or if you spill something on them, the next round you will use your logical mind or your logical mind will present this information for you and you won't be relying on your palate. My next recommendation is the sake itself. Start with five vastly different sake. For example, a very highly aromatic daiginjo, a simple junmai, a fairly pronounced yamahai or kimoto style, perhaps a namazake, an unpasteurized sake, a simple futsushin. Uh, if you start with five vastly different sake, it's going to be a lot easier to pick out, identify, and remember the differences between them. As you progress and get better at the exercise, you can start to use sake that more are more similar to each other. When you get really good, you could put five junmai or five junmai ginjo or five daiginjo on the table and see what you can identify. Again, this exercise is probably more difficult than most people imagine. So make it simple at first and slowly make it more and more difficult as you get better and better at tasting. As you can imagine, this is a great opportunity to use old sake, stuff that's over the hill, Namazake, unpasteurized sake, that it's a bit past its prime. Uh, you can get rid of your old sake this way, or you can take it off of somebody else's hands as well. Uh, and this is great for learning to identify faults. If you have one that's too idiosyncratic, for example, a, a Yamaha that's really, really strong, uh, or an old sake that's far too old, really, you can blend it. Blend it with something simpler to back off of its intensity. Uh, and you can, again, start to use something like that in the tasting exercise. Lastly, you don't have to use five sake. I think two is too easy to start with, obviously, but you can start with three sake and do the exercise, and as you get more comfortable, move up to four sake and eventually to five sake in the exercise. I don't see any merit in using any more than five. To me, uh, if you're using six sake, it just gets too confusing, uh, and there's just too many to actually get your, get your tasting buds around. So I would think five is the max, but you can start with three and work your way up to five uh, as well. In closing, remember the goal. The goal is to develop your ability to identify, remember, and express particular flavors and aromas in sake, and to do it with consistency and repeatability. For that, this really, really is a brilliant exercise, but you do have to do it quite often. It's also a lot of fun uh, as well. I hope that you find it useful. Thanks.